we're going right into this one. Hello, my friends, uh, comrades. Is that a, a, a crypto tanky language? Who knows? Uh, my name is Vosh. We're shit talking destiny today. Normally, I do this with a nice like levity of tone because I do like destiny is content and i think that and i learned a lot from him like i really did anyone who's watched him knows that obvious okay he really he really fucked up this time though i'm actually genuinely disgusted with his behavior so i have subjected myself over the past 24 hours i avoided these before to let's let's count them okay are you ready to count them three count them three videos that he has done pertaining in one form or another to the Bolivian coup. Yep, we're going over Bolivia again, but don't worry. We're going to make it real spicy this time. First, he just talked about it into his webcam, I guess. He just shared thoughts on Bolivia. And second, he talked with David Pacman, who I have already, I think, shit-talked sufficiently uh, concerning his take on the Bolivian coup. And then third, he debated Rem the Bath Boy, a noted philosophy master and annoying, petulant um, sycophant. And the result of these, I think, were um, perhaps uh, medically cancer. Um, I hated it. I hated every moment of it. Um, I could go over every moment of these three videos. We would be here for a while. I'm not going to do that. So instead, I'm going to tell you guys a story, and then I'm going to share a mountain of facts with you. Destiny is not a leftist. He is a progressive. He is. Race issues, gender, trans. He, he, he's, in those respects, he's, he's pretty far to the left. Economically, however, he is very distrustful of the real left. And the reason for that is, well, there are a variety of reasons. One, he's a liberal. I mean, you know, that is a reason. Um, another one is because he's had a lot of really bad debates lately with leftists, by which I mean leftists have come to him and performed poorly. I've defended him in those counts. I have no respect for lefties who talk shit, who step up and then fail to defend their points uh, cogently. I'm not, no, no, no. I'm not a fan of that at all. However, just because you've had bad experiences with people of a political uh, domination or, or denomination of some sort, this does not mean that all concerns from that group can be dismissed outright. Uh, I, it's obvious, right? It'd be irrational to do otherwise. I think that Destiny right now is acting like an actual enlightened centrist. The, the joke version of them. The cringy, narcissistic, ill-informed, self-obsessed, a uh, sycophantic dipshit who is more interested in the aesthetics of moderation than they are in actually knowing uh, what's right. I can I can illustrate this actually. Watch, watch. He he calls himself the omni liberal. Look at this. Look at this 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 video he's provided to illustrate my point. We can open. We don't need to go ten seconds into this video for my point to be made. Watch. I, like I consider like platforming somebody that is a lefty um, to talk about historical things to be on the same level of, of platforming like Nick Fuentes to talk about the Holocaust. Not eight seconds, not even 10 seconds. So lefties takes on history are now apparently in the same ballpark as neo-Nazis takes on history. I could spend a video talking about why that's dumb, how lefties have uh, uh, contributed invaluable insight into our historical process, how there are a glut of left-leaning historians. In fact, I believe history is one of the majors most infested by leftists because, uh, you know, infested in, in the good way, because leftists actually have a wide suite of tools capable of analyzing previous historical events, context, uh, class, conflict, you know, um, in ways that were previously unexamined. They give light and context to um, things which otherwise were considered irrelevant or didn't really sort of supplement a, a broader narrative. It helps us understand um, it helps us understand the present because only through a recognition of the past can we really sort of contextualize why we're here today. Whereas neo-Nazis, every time they ever talk about history, always they're lying. It's intrinsic to them. 
It's a, it's, it's a disease in the head. They have to lie about history. It's essential to their ideology. You can't have neo-Nazism without bullshit, ahistorical, uh, pagan fantasization. You can't have it without this mythologized past. You can't have it without blatantly lying about the history of whiteness in Europa. It's, it's not possible. So this false equivalency is in and of itself unbelievably stupid, brain dead, in fact, and below Destiny's uh, character. Then again, he does often say he's bad at history, so maybe this is perfectly fitting. The rest of these videos are not significantly better. Uh, here are some hot quotes I can share with you. Um, so while discussing this with David Pacman, um, Destiny disparages people who he considers to be, and I quote, more or less, far left like big Bernie supporters, like commies or socialists, or whatever. The implication being there that big Bernie Sanders supporters are communists and socialists. Some of them, I'm sure, perhaps including myself. Um, but... That sounds like the kind of thing that I would expect from some milk toast. like, no, I think I would expect to hear that from Fox News, wouldn't I? Uh, these big Bernie Sanders supporters, these communists and socialists, they have no idea what's good. That's, that's kind of sounds like a Fox News talking point. I mean, where does your, um, where does your, um, uh, like, like window of discourse have to be centered at where you consider a Bernie Sanders supporter to be like a communist or a socialist? To be clear, he did say big Bernie Sanders supporter. Okay. Uh, here's another really good one. Really good one. Can we watch the videos? No, they're about an hour and a half put all together. I'm not going over all these videos. Because unlike most content creators, Destiny is a streamer, like me, which means that the points he makes in his videos are often disconnected, jumbled, and um, poorly organized. I'm not insulting him with that. I mean, same, you know, we don't write scripts. So it would be, I think, a mess. But that's okay. I've got a few more wonderful quotes for you. Okay, are you ready? Janine Añez, that, that's the interim president of Bolivia. We're getting to that soon. Isn't, can you really say she's killing protesters? Have you seen her go out onto the street killing protesters herself? Are you saying that she's taking a gun out to the street? This was in a conversation with Rem. Uh, that's an interesting one. Um, he also claims that what happened in Bolivia wasn't a coup uh, because it was non-violent and the ba basic same systems of government were left intact. Um, you know, I actually have quite a few more of these, but that's okay. We can... Shh, 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 shh. This isn't super relevant. Let's, um, let's, let's get right to the heart of the matter. I'm actually calling Destiny out on this one. Destiny has in the past said that he dislikes historical revisionism and he dislikes uh, sensationalist um, uh, takes on current events, which I think the Bolivian thing is, you know, I think it's fair to contextualize it within that, you know, framework of current events. Um, Destiny has engaged in such blatant revisionism, such blatant a historical um, uh, smear mongering that uh, I, I actually consider this to be not only below a station, but outright disgusting. And I think that Destiny should either shut the fuck up about Bolivia for the reasons that I'm about to go into in length, or he should debate me about it. Those are the two options because he has been posting significant levels of cringe, and I consider it actively irresponsible as a public figure for somebody with his audience to be platforming that level of misinformation. It's actually disgusting to me. And it seems that if I am the only one capable of doing so, I will, I will step up, okay? Because, because apparently, I don't know, everyone else is either doing a bad job defending the Bolivia thing, or maybe they just can't handle the, the, the Ben Shapiro of the left. Shut up. Or debate me. Because this is not, this isn't some esoteric, hypothetical, uh, abstract, interpretive theory issue. This is just factual information that you're wrong on. And in the spirit of factual information, because I know that you are 
probably not going to debate me even though I uh, am saying this now. But I know that your fan base is really particular on the details because if I engage in any hyperbole whatsoever, they will call me out on it. So I'm going to be real careful from this point forward. We're going to do it nice and logic-like, okay? Nice and logic-like, all right? We're going to go over the facts of the case quickly, concisely, and then I'm going to point out where he is wrong. So let's get started. Let us, let us not waste a moment, my friends. Let us not waste a goddamn moment. Hello. We're breaking this down logic, facts and logic style, like uh, like in the that one meme that they that we do with, with, with American Dad, and he says owning a libtard epic style, and it's he's like he's got like the big clock. Okay, <sighs> these are the five questions. Okay, was there election fraud? Was it a coup? Is Evo Morales an authoritarian? If there was a coup, was it a good thing? Was there CIA involvement? These are the five questions that people keep going over. What's interesting to me is that the initial question was only, was it a coup? That's the only question that was initially relevant. But people start branching out into these other questions. Uh, and all these debates with Destiny, I mean, I, it, initially, like, it seems like the question should be, is it a coup? Is it a coup? He denies it's a coup, or at least I've seen him deny it in some times and other times he's wishy-washy about it. I don't know. I'm going to assume he does not believe that it's a coup. Um, if that's the case, then, why are so many people talking about issues that are secondary to that question? Was it a coup? And it reminded me of something. It reminded me of the death of Trayvon Martin. Because every time a young black kid is shot by, a, by the cop or by the police or something... It seems like the only question that's relevant should be, was it murder? Was this legitimate? But then the news stories run, you know? Uh, he was no angel. He was caught smoking marijuana outside his high school at 17, you know? Uh, uh, you, you know, um, oh, well, actually, if you look at the facts of the case, he uh, uh, turned around and followed George Zimmerman prior to the... It's the same... The, the central question is there, but it seems like we keep distracting it. Like, was it a coup? Oh, well, Evo Morales, you know, extended the term limits. Okay, was it a coup? Oh, well, there was report of election fraud. It's really strange to me. It's it's this misdirection that mischaracterizes the, the, the priority of the cases here. We're going to go over these point by point, point and counterpoint, okay? No more time wasted. Was there election fraud? Point, okay? The OAS report claims there, there was. The OAS report is the central tenant of all claims concerning whether or not there was election fraud in Bolivia. Here is the OAS report. Look, I brought it for you. Look at this, nice. Facts and logic. We're not going over this right now. If you want to go over it, you can Google it. I've read every word of the OAS report twice now. For those of you who don't know, the OAS was originally founded by America to be a um, a political organization um, uh, 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 with the goal of stopping leftism from spreading, stopping socialism from spreading in Latin America. Does that mean intrinsically that they are wrong in this case? No, it does not. But I do think it is relevant broadly to what is taking place here. I'm going to close this window because it's no longer relevant to us. You can read it on your own time if you choose to. I have read through the length of the OAS report and I disagree with its conclusions. I'm going to explain why I disagree with its conclusions now, okay? The OAS report claims that there was um, significant link, uh, linking, honestly, you people. Here you go, have a link, you, cra you crazy, crazy kids. You wild sons of bitches, you. Go, go on ahead, have yourself a good one. Now, let's focus. The OAS report, the central, the conclusion of the report, essentially, is that there was a significant level of electoral fraud going into Evo Morales' fourth presidential election. So this is the election that everyone's all uh, tussled up about, okay? So was there election fraud? All right, let's examine this claim. Well, 
one of the, there are essentially two reasons why they say there was election fraud. You see, in an argument, you have a premise and then a conclusion. The conclusion they formed was that there was a, a significant, suspicious electoral fraud, evidence of such. The premises that led into that conclusion, I do not believe they sufficiently support that conclusion, and we can go over the reasons why. For those of you who don't know, Bolivia, like many countries, has two forms of election counting, okay? The first is called a quick count, all right? So that means that using a series of contractors, they really quickly roughly estimate how many votes are coming in so the media has something to go over, you know? So the media can uh, uh, really salivate over the drama of the election, all right? And then you have the official count, which is not tracked and updated consistently, but rather published at the end of the election. The official count is what is actually legal. The quick count has no legal status. It's really just media fodder. Again, okay? all this easily looked up or in the realm of factual information. Now, here's what happened in the fourth presidential election of Evo Morales. The quick count had Morales about seven to eight points ahead of his next runner-up. He needs to be 10 points ahead or more to win the presidential election. If he's not 10 points ahead or more, the, um, we the, then go into the second round of elections. We're currently in the first. He was about seven to eight points ahead. And then, with about 86% of the vote tallied, the quick count cut off. Spooky. When the official count was released about 20 hours later, Evo Morales had just over a 10-point lead, securing him the presidential election in the first round of elections. Uh-oh. Why did the media go dark on it like that? That's strange. Suspicious play afoot? Well, actually, no. For one, there is no legal standing to the quick count. In this election, the quick count reached 86% of the total votes before it went black, before it went dark, it stopped reporting. That's not unique. In previous Bolivian presidential elections, the, um, the quick count hadn't even made it up that far. It's common to cut the quick count before it gets even close to 100% of the vote counted. Why? Because the official count is the account that matters legally. And for optics purposes, in presidential elections, you do not want a simultaneous release of two vote counts that have different totals. You don't want it to be a point where the quick count and the official count are both publishing different numbers because they were counted differently at the end of the election at the same time. You don't want that. What if it was a close election? What if the quick count showed that one person won and the, the real, the, the official count showed that it was actually, it needed to go into the second round? And you had both of those published at the same time. It would be a media circus. So the quick count cuts off earlier. This is not the first time that's happened. It's happened many times before. So the fact that the quick count stopped reporting at 86% is not in and of itself suspicious. We can add that in. Counterpoint. The quick count typically stops reporting election results well before 100% of the vote is counted. So that is one of the claims of the OAS report, which again, you can read if you would like to, uh, that, has, that does not support the conclusion that there was electoral fraud. The second one, I think, is even juicier. The um, OAS makes the claim that the um, that the, 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 uh, uh, um, the official counts report is a noticeable jump, like a spike up in the support for Evo Morales, who would then go on to win the election. Um, so like, quick count, quick count, quick count, everything goes dark. And then when the lights turn back on, whoop, Evo Morales wins. Completely factually incorrect. This is the other central claim. Here is a handy chart showing the quick count. All of this right here is the quick count. 
and the um, the the um, percentage points by which um, the MAS party, Evo Morales's party, um, was winning. So here, this red line right here is the 10 point margin that guarantees a win without having to trigger a second round of elections. So look right here. The dark blue is the um, is like their their um, their their like legislative body, and the light blue is their president and vice president. Okay, so see. Early on in the quick count, right over here, when we have just like 20% of the votes counted, they're like at zero points ahead. See right here? At 20%, they're like right here, basically. They're like right here. But then, as more and more of the quick count votes are counted, oh, oh, 60% of the votes are counted now. Uh-oh, we're up to about four points ahead of the opposition. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. And then it cuts off at 86%, as is normal, as is usual. And then when the official count comes out, oh, here we are, past the 10% point lead that is needed to win the election without a second uh, round of elections. Can I can I point out to you, fine people, my, my friends, this is a consistent line graph. Look at this. The explanation for why the point lead increased in favor of Evo Morales' party with time is that it takes longer to count the votes in the rural counties of Bolivia, and it is in the rural counties of Bolivia that the MAS party, Evo Morales' party, has a higher proportional level of support. So the idea that the quick count went dark and then the official count showed a sudden spike in support for Ava Morales is factually incorrect. Not only is it consistent with the trends previously demonstrated throughout the quick, uh, the quick count, but in addition, it's consistent with not only previous expectations for the, um, for the counties and their relative levels of presidential support, but with polling predictions that were done prior to the election, almost all of which had Evo Morales winning by a point lead comparable in the ballpark of what he ended up winning with. This idea, this ludicrous accusation that there was a sudden jump after the quick count went dark is false. Again, you're free to read the OAS report. These are the two central tenets of its claim that there was electoral fraud. These two right here. Both of these points are wrong. Now, one thing I want to make perfect, what about the two-thirds of the OAS report? What? I read the OAS report. Now, one thing that should be noted is, just because both of these claims are false does not mean there is not corruption in Bolivia. This is something that people will often jump to. I've seen Destiny pointed out as well. There is a generally high level of corruption in Bolivia, like a pretty astounding level, actually. It is a very corrupt country. There's no denying that. A lot of its corruption comes from, I mean, it's from the bureaucracy, there's the military, there's the business. The corruption is, well, uh, fairly substantial. Um, that being said, however, the fact that there is a relatively high level of corruption in Bolivia does not mean that we can just blithely dismiss any election results we don't like as being a product of that corruption. There is no evidence, based on the OAS report, that the two central claims they use to support their conclusion that Evo Morales stole the election are valid. So, in regards to the question, was there election fraud? I and others, the um, you know the uh, Center Economic Policy Report, what have you, find this to be insufficient. I do not believe that there was election fraud. If there is evidence contrary to this, I am uh, people are one hundred percent free to send this to me. I've looked over the OAS. I've talked with Dylan Burns. This does this seems to be well within the purview of. Um, of, of a fair and reasonable election, consistent with prior polling, consistent with expectations for people's relative interest in the um, in the presidential candidates. This is, I think, fine. Dylan Burns, Dylan Burns is twappy. He's that uh, former gravel teen turned uh, foreign policy advisor to a um, elected official. Pretty cool stuff. Was it, <coughs> 
That was the weirdest cough I've ever had in my life. Was it a coup? Jesus. Wow, that was like a, it's like cough sneeze. Was it a coup? Okay, this one, this one should be real easy, okay? This one should be real easy. Are you ready for it? So here's the definition of a coup. A sudden, violent, and illegal seizure of power from a government. So sudden, it was triggered following um, an election result that the opposition party didn't like. Violent, it was done at the behest of the military and police following violence committed against Evo Morales' supporters. If you want evidence of that violence being committed, not only were there individual crimes and protests that erupted across the country, but there was a rather performative demonstration of violence against one of the mayors in Bolivia who had her hair cut, sprayed with red paint, was dragged around the streets barefoot by far-right supporters of the opposition party. That's pretty scary. It's it's pretty it's pretty easy I think for us to uh for us to dismiss that like oh you know who just huh, who it's just you know just common post election stuff you know far right you know um uh, militant groups like running around stripping mayors down shaving their head and humiliating them by dragging them around the street. just co just common post election stuff you know not really also I think and I think this is a fairly reasonable take on my part that having the fucking military and police arrive at the at the at the government building to demand the um to to demand the resignation of the president i think pretty implicitly suggests a level of violence which is which is sufficient to deem this a coup i don't think you need to bomb the building for it to be a coup the leaders stepped down because the fucking military was outside all right the leaders claimed that they wanted to bring an end to the violence that they had seen on the hands of the far right groups and protesters who were angry over evo morales's election and then finally, an illegal seizure of power from government. Well, to my knowledge, um, nothing about what the military did was legal. And also, they broke the constitutional line of presidential succession by also forcing um, the other people who were in line to become president after Evo Morales to resign. Appointing the legendary fucking current interim president, whose name currently escapes me, Yes, Yanin Añez. Añez? I'm going to go with Añez. That sounds, that sounds suitably Bolivian to me. Allowing her, who had um, essentially no public support prior to that point, and absolutely no um, legitimate claim to the presidency, source on the breaking of the Constitution. L look up the constitutional line of succession in Bolivia. You can Google that. You can just Google that. The other people who were in line for succession after Eva Morales also were forced to step down. I think this pretty clearly, pretty reasonably constitutes a sudden, violent, and illegal seizure of power from the government. I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty reasonable um, interpretation. So I'm going to go with uh, the counterpoint here being the literal definition of a coup that's my that's my uh, counterpoint right there oas conclusion in the four factors review technology chain of custody integrity of the tally sheets and statistical projections irregularities were detected ranging from very serious to indicative of something wrong this leads the technological audit team to question the integrity of the results in the election yeah string theory they didn't provide evidence to those claims in the OAS conclusion, they supported this with a number of things, but the only things that could meaningfully be quantified outside of the evidence they provided, you know, their, um, their, um, their own, uh, um, like researchers, their own um, uh, uh, election watch officials, wore the quick count claim and the sudden jump in support. I think the fact, and pardon me, so here's my takeaway from this, and I want to clear up this OAS thing once and for all. The final showdown. If you have... A group of people whose job it is to verify the integrity of an election. And then when they publish a report on that, several of the claims, notably all of the claims that can be verified using external uh, empirical data, are false. Not just false like we made a miscalculation, false like 
this is literally contrary to known reality, we just lied, that makes me doubt the pieces of information which cannot be empirically verified outside of their own reports. This isn't Facebook, Vosh. I generally think an, um, an organization like the OAS wouldn't just make shit up. Well, they literally did, though. The claims of um, of the, the sudden rise in support following the um, the blackout on the quick count and the claims that... Um, uh, um, that the... Um, uh, the quick count, like refraining from going up to the hundred percent. These are these literally. These are just factually incorrect. They don't support their conclusion. So again, because I am not God and I do not have the ability to perform a statistical analysis of the data they collected to review their methodology, nobody has that ability. And given the fact that the pieces of information I am capable of questioning are flagrantly false, and given the fact, and this is this is circumstantial, I admit that but I feel it relevant in this instance that the OAS has a history of opposing the election of left-wing governments and was literally created for that purpose. Anybody who says here, oh, a big organization that tracks election results wouldn't lie, you are delusional. That's not how the world works. So again, I am, I am uh, uh, limited in my ability here because unlike God, I am not capable of independently verifying the methodology of the data collection uh, the OAS engages in. I can only challenge the points that I have data on. Now, here's the juicy point. Is Evo Morales an authoritarian? We can go over this real nice and clean, okay? Here are some points to Evo Morales being an authoritarian. We can be real clean about this, okay? So, held referendum on abolishing term limits, okay? Um, create, created new constitution, which he claimed refreshed his available presidential term limits. Supreme Tribunal um, voided term limits after referendum failed. And what's what's some more here? What's what's some more? Are, are there any others that I'm missing right now? I feel I feel like these are the big three, aren't they? These seem to be what's going on here. He has a spooky mustache. No, he doesn't. What are you talking about? All right. In the absence of spooky mustaches, so keep in mind whether or his hair is pretty bad. Morales is an egomaniac. I don't think that's a falsifiable claim. Now. Keep in mind, whether or not Evo Morales is an authoritarian has literally nothing to do with whether or not what happened to him was a coup. All right? Now, held referendum on abolishing term limits. There are claims that Morales stacked the courts. There are claims to a lot of things, comrade. We're going to get over all of it. So, held referendum on abolishing term limits. I don't think... There's anything wrong with that? I, I don't I don't think that's authoritarian at all. I don't like in the slightest. There are plenty of there are many developed countries with no presidential executive term limits. Simple. I don't think in a vacuum that there's anything wrong with holding a referendum on term limits. What's with the libs in chat? They're Destiny fans who are uh, here to defend their uh, their god and master by asking me to debunk claims the OAS has propped forth that I am literally incapable of doing so because I don't have access to the methodologies the OAS engaged in. They're literally asking me to falsify data that is, from my position, unfalsifiable and ignoring the fact that data they presented which is falsifiable was all false. It's actually really fucking pathetic. So, that's my point. I don't think that there's anything intrinsically, inherently wrong with holding a referendum to abolish term limits. 
Now, after Evo Morales' first presidential election, he drafted a new constitution, which, um, which put into law a two-term limit for the president because he had already had one turn um because he had already had one turn the um uh he argued or i suppose it was just accepted there's a I, i'm actually not sure who initially made this claim but whatever the case may be it came to be that evo morales would end up serving three terms the first one under the original constitution and the next two under the new constitution so I'm going to be perfectly forthcoming here. I do think that's a little bit strange. If, if putting forward a new constitution, uh, a, 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 which is fine in and of itself, but then like getting the extra term limit because the one prior to the old constitution didn't count. I think that any reasonable reading, any reasonable reading of the, in, the, the, the implementation of a new constitution would include within it the assumption that anyone who had already served a term would be bound to only one remaining term of the two limit. I think I think that's fairly reasonable. So So I agree this interpretation of the new constitutional term limits is unreasonable. However, it passed through legal channels and Evo won his respective elections in a huge landslide. So, what did fuck you? I agree. No, fuck you. I have it correct. Fucking blue lines. I agree this interpretation of new constitutional term limits is unreasonable. However, it passed through legal channels and Evo won his respective election is in a huge landslide. So why is this relevant? Okay. Uh, for one, I, I do agree. I think this is an unreasonable interpretation of, um, of the constitutional term limits. I think I, I do agree that's silly. However, the argument here is not does Evo Morales ever do things that benefit him? Or does Evo Morales ever act um, uh, in a self-aggrandizing manner? Or does Evo Morales seek to control power? The question is, is Evo Morales an authoritarian? So when I think of authoritarians, I think of things like the suspension of elections or the or pr like pr pushing yourself like, like a, the indefinite president or like president for life or first citizen or something similar. However, this seems to me like while maybe perhaps a little bit dicey or, or convenient with big quotation marks, this seems to me like basically an extension of the abolition of term limits, which had at that point not been passed. But again, I don't have an intrinsic problem with the removal of term limits. Is it convenient for him that the Constitution was interpreted this way? Yes, unquestionably. Would I have, if I was living in Bolivia at that time, been perhaps a little bit sus about all of this? No, I, I agree. I absolutely would. However, is it authoritarian for him to run in an election when he has a technicality that allows him to do so, and he then wins an overwhelming majority of the popular vote? As he did here. Here, we can see right here. Um, Evo Morales... Wikipedia. Do you guys like how whenever I say Evo Morales, I try to say it all fancy pants Latin-like? Are you proud of me? I'm working hard, you know. Okay, let's see. Third presidential term. I'm seeing a combination of yes and no, okay? And I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say yes. Some people are saying they're proud of me. All right, where's the, where's the damn third presidential election? Presidency of Evo Morales. There we go. Uh, all right. Where's the... No, this is just the presidency. Here. Beautiful. So as we can clearly, cleanly see right over here, this, this is the third Bolivian presidential election that Evo Morales won. Still has the bad haircut. No denying that. 
He won with 61.36% of the votes, nearly three times what the next runner-up won. So why am I pointing this out? Well, I do think it's important to hammer in the fact that Evo Morales is legitimately an extremely popular presidential candidate. But also, um, I don't really consider it authoritarian to use a technicality to run again if you then win an overwhelming majority of the popular vote. Like, I don't consider that authoritarian in the slightest. And I think it's very important for people to distinguish between convenient interpretation of constitutional term limits and authoritarian. Really big difference between those two things. Now, Supreme Tribunal voided term limits after his referendum failed. This is one of the things that people get up in a tizzy about the most. After, um, after his uh, referendum on abolishing term limits uh, failed, I think about a year afterwards, the, the Supreme Tribunal um, voided term limits. They were like, they Thanos snapped that shit. They, they, you know, they, uh, they, 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 they made him disappear. Why? They claimed it was a violation of Evo Morales' human rights. Now, let's be clear. I'm going to be very clear about this, okay? Is it probably relevant that the majority of the Supreme Tribunal um, uh, um, members who voted to abolish term limits were themselves fans of Evo Morales? Yeah, I think it's pretty relevant. I don't think that the Supreme Tribunal would have made that decision were it not for the fact that Evo Morales was the president and was probably lined up to win more elections given his overwhelming popularity. If it had been some far-right fucking uh, politician in office and the same Supreme Tribunal had had the opportunity to void those, um, had had the opportunity to void those term limits, I don't believe they would have gone through with it. I don't think so. I, th I don't believe so. They probably would have left those term limits in place. So is this a case of favoritism and collaboration between two branches of government? Yes, I believe it is. That does not an authoritarian make. Terribly sorry. For two reasons. For one, and you all know this, the Supreme Tribunal is elected, not appointed. Now, Contrary point, the Supreme Tribunal is elected, sure, but they're elected from hand-picked representatives that are put forward um, by the ruling party, meaning that while Evo can't appoint them, Evo can put forward candidates that he knows will be favorable to him. A counter-argument to this, of course, would be that this is still a significantly more um, democratic system of judge appointment than the one we have here in the United States of America. Vosh, if Obama had done the same stuff while being extremely popular, you know the right would have shit their pants in a similar way. Difference being Morales had, what, 70% approval rating? I think that America has seen much shadier shit than what's going on here. So keep in mind right here, this is a case of the Supreme Tribunal, basically their Supreme Court, which is elected, mind you, voiding term limits a year after a failed referendum. In the United States of America, and I know this is not a, a unique observation, in the United States of America in 2000, George W. Bush won the presidency after losing the popular vote, after election fraud being committed by his brother in Florida, and he was then appointed by the Supreme Court. So an unelected Supreme Court appointed the loser of the popular vote to be the president of the United States of America following electoral fraud committed by that failed president's brother in a key battleground state. That happened in America, and that is, unironically, significantly more authoritarian, significantly more, uh, to use the, the hashtag woke hot kids term, sus, than anything that has happened here in Bolivia. And if you think an appropriate response to what happened in America would have been the United States military engaging in a series of, um, uh, uh, of violent acts against Bush supporters and key officials before marching up in the White House and demanding his resignation, before putting someone who had essentially no share of the popular vote into office after breaking the constitutional line of presidential succession, 
then you can say the same thing about Bolivia if you really want to. But if you don't think that's a good way to handle the 2000 presidential election here in America, then you are utterly hypocritical if you believe that that response is appropriate considering what happened with Evo Morales. So I want to be perfectly clear. I agree that what happened uh, between the Supreme Tribunal, Evo Morales, and the abolition of the term limits was political favoritism. I do not disagree with that in the slightest. My contention was political favoritism. It was done through legal channels and demonstrated less authoritarian tendencies than were present in prior U.S. elections. I want to make that perfectly clear. Now, do I believe that Bush is an authoritarian? Um, mm, uh, I mean, more so perhaps than I believe, you know, most presidents are authoritarian. Do I believe that he's authoritarian in the way people mean authoritarian when they refer to Evo Morales? No. When people talk about Evo Morales, they're not talking about, like, authoritarian in the sense like, oh, Evo Morales is self-serving and he's like kind of sometimes like sus or whatever, but overall he respects the democratic process. When libs like Destiny or David Pacman talk about Evo Morales and him being an authoritarian, it's pretty clear what kind of picture they're painting. They're painting the picture of an authoritarian strongman who seized power through illegitimate means and has a stranglehold over the government. Which is just not the case. We can back this up with a few more counterpoints. For one, for one, Evo Morales offered to hold second election under OAS watch after fourth presidential election. Remember, Evo Morales, after seeing the displeasure and discontent, by the way, based on completely illegitimate reasons, following his fourth presidential election, offered to hold a second one under the watch of the OAS. A fun point. His opponents agreed until a few days before the military coup. I guess they saw a better way to seize that power than trying again at an election they knew they were going to lose, huh? So, this to me does not strike the image of an authoritarian. We can go for a few more points. Massive popu popular democratic support, no prior history, how do I type of illegality or unconstitutional behavior? I don't, I don't know. I mean, again, I, I just, no huge history of executive actions, no, no shitting on the Constitution. I just, I don't see it. I don't see it, folks. Where is it? Keep in mind that at this point, while obviously any coverage of an election or of any political discontent is going to be, um, it, it is going to be um, is somewhat subjective. I mean, it's impossible to give a completely objective take on this. For the most part, everything that I'm saying here is completely factually true, and the interpretations that I'm giving of these events I consider to be fairly reasonable. I don't think that I'm engaging in any conspiratorial logic here. I don't believe anything I'm saying is particularly unreasonable. Everything that I'm saying I think is a fairly reasonable, natural, uh, sort of abductive um, um, extrapolation from empirical data that can be accessed by everyone here. Again, everyone is free to read the OAS report. Everyone is free to go ahead and look at the history of elections in this country. All of that history is open and uh, evident to everyone. If it was a coup, was it a good thing? I can't believe I actually have to bring this point up, but here, I'm just gonna, here, I'm gonna bring a Google window up over here. What about the referendum to end term limits which failed? I already addressed that. Did I not? Yeah, I already addressed that. 
So here, look, it's a Google window here. Okay. So if we Google Bolivia violence, we can look, you know what? Do we have to go through all of it? We can look through, uh, so uh, protesters being shot dead on the street. Um, the interim president has declared um, immunity from prosecution for any um, uh, for any soldiers or police who are engaging in violence against the protesters. They are literally being gunned down. Um, the interim president declared herself president to an empty um, Congress chamber. Um, the um, the uh, uh, interim president is a far right fascist who said that she uh, wants to essentially deport all of the immigrant population of this country, which is two thirds of the entire country. She she, I mean, she's literally a fascist. She called them demons and devil worshippers. Um, there's the fact that um, far right violence has increased tremendously, and um, the uh, um, the uh, interim president has actually spoken about making illegal the MAS party, the party of Evo Morales. Um, so this is literally a fascist coup where protesters are being gunned down on the street. Church becomes improvised morgue as Bolivian violence continues. Who could have done this? New election bill after violent clashes. Ooh, what's this? Bolivia's Legislative Assembly will begin debating a bill today that would nullify a disputed election to give way for a new vote, a new electoral board, after the leftist leader Evo Morales resigned under pressure this month. I love that. I love that nice soft language. Resigned under pressure. Nixon resigned under pressure. Okay. Words have meanings. Would a new vote stop the violence? Little trust in the regime led by interim president Hinin Añez. Um, so on and so forth, coup-mongering, white wing senator, when it's really, I mean, you can just go over this, like, uh, OAS, uh, not OAS, sorry, um, the, um, Bolivia is turning into a far-right hellhole very fucking quickly, like, very, very fucking quickly. So, does anyone sincerely believe that this coup was a good thing? Evo Morales, for whatever opinions you may have on his electoral history, led a, was probably the best thing that has ever happened to Bolivia. Under his rule, under his um, leadership, the country has seen a substantial, marked, and disproportionate rise in its standard of living, thanks to his rejection of the World Bank and the IMF, thanks to his protectionist policies, thanks to his support of indigenous groups within that country, and right Right now, there are literally indigenous protesters being gunned down on the street. So I'm going to go with a here. This is sort of a hot take right here. I'm going to go with this one. If it was a coup, was it a good thing? I'm going to go with no. See, did I think I think that I think I pretty well substantiated my argument here. Now here's the one that. Um, that um that that destiny seems to keep getting hung up on i don't know why this is so relevant whether or not there was cia involvement like like all of this is still the case like whether or not there's cia involvement doesn't it doesn't change anything that we're looking at right here you know I'm sure Destiny would say that the military asked, not told him to step down. If Destiny believes that the military is showing up to the um the um like the White House and asking you to step down after far right violence has happened to your protest uh, to your protesters, and they're also politely asking your next line of succession in constitutional like presidential um terms to step down, if he believes that being asked means anything separate from being told, then destiny is legitimately retarded. And the others in the line of succession did not willingly step down. They said they stepped down for fear of violence. I can say the R word because I'm on YouTube. Destiny will never know my freedom. Anyway, if he sincerely believes that's an argument, that's legitimately brain dead. Now, was there CIA involvement? I, I don't see how this is relevant to the broader discussion on Bolivia, but we can talk about it anyway. So he, there are three pieces of evidence. There is no evidence that, that the CIA didn't involve themselves because they're an intelligence community. Like we can't, we can't say like, oh yeah, well I went down to the CIA office in you know, Vermont and I didn't see them doing anything wacky. So that's evidence they didn't do. It's, it's an intelligence agency. Like we literally, we don't fucking know. Okay. So there's no evidence against CIA involvement. There is only evidence for 
CIA involvement. He also wouldn't call it a seizure of power since they're holding elections and didn't install a fascist military state. Uh, again, call systemic violence against the opposition party, threatening to make illegal the entire party that they are referring to, and then um, uh, literally installing a violent um, far-right military-backed ethno state where you call for the death or deportation of, of, um, of, of indigenous people. I mean, I don't know what Destiny's definition of fascism is, but it's slightly different from mine. Now... There are three pieces of evidence um, to the um, to the CIA's involvement in uh, the Bolivian coup, and I want to be perfectly clear here. Perfectly clear, whether or not the CIA was involved is irrelevant to me. I do not care. It's still bad. I don't like American right wing foreign policy, and I don't like Bolivian right-wing domestic policy it doesn't i don't i don't care it's not relevant to me i do believe the cia was involved but i cannot claim this is factually the case why do i believe this well as i said three key pieces of information for one and i'm and i'm going to point this out very clearly these first two are highly suspect and circumstantial highly suspect Okay, I believe CIA involvement. I cannot factually prove it. I want to be very clear about this. This is my personal belief. It is the belief of many left-leaning people, I imagine. There is no smoking gun. Now, the first piece of information is this. I'm sure some of you have seen this before. This has been largely unsubstantiated because it's only been picked up by a few news sites, but there are reports of the Radio Education Network of Bolivia leaking audio clips um, who in, uh, involving opposition leaders calling for a coup against Evo Morales, some of whom are Americans. Marco Rubio, Bob Menendez, Ted Cruz. Now, these audio logs, and I've listened to a few of them, these are mo mostly in Spanish. Um, I have listened to translations of these. This is, while I think relevant, not in and of itself sufficient to indicate that there was direct American involvement in the coup. But that does not mean it is irrelevant. When we're talking about intelligence agencies like the CIA, it's not like we're going to find a document like proving that the same like oh yes here is uh, here i am director of the cia and here is my plan to provide aid and, and arms to the far right wing pro like no like no obviously not when it comes to intelligence agencies we have to rely on one of two things either um heavy heavy levels of speculation best uh, based on tidbits of evidence or b uh cross our fingers and hope for an investigative journalist to figure out more than what we're personally capable of figuring out or we could wait 40 years and the CIA will just declassify all of its documents, <laughs> you know? Um, in many cases, it's both of the two combined. Even investigative journalists don't always have all of the facts to work with. Again, it is an intelligence agency. Um, another fact that I find interesting is the fact that following the Bolivian coup, there were a huge wave of bots on Twitter repeating essentially the same message over and over. This is not a coup, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Uh, it was all like stock messaging, like copy pasted, very obvious bot spam or people being paid off. That's not a dispute. I mean, you can look at the trends. Um, and a lot of the activity for that bot wave came from Virginia you know langley maybe or the cia is now do i believe the cia is so stupid that they would do a whole botnet campaign on twitter and not even use vpns maybe yeah maybe it's not like it's the only time they've done really obvious stupid shit along with other branches of government like yeah do I know for a fact it was them? No, there's also a large community of like expat Bolivians that live in Virginia. So maybe it was them. Then again, I mean, there was a lot of tweets coming from Virginia. So again, it's circumstantial. Um, I don't believe that this solidifies or proves anything. I think it's a piece of information. And I 
do think anyone who argues the CIA isn't boomer enough to avoid using VPNs while doing something like that is maybe a little bit misguided. The government is, even the intelligence agencies are run largely by dipshit, uh, technologically illiterate old white men. So... The third piece of information is, um, I think, uh, the most telling. Um, it's not even a, 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 a nugget or a piece of fact. It's really just uh, precedent. Destiny says this a lot. He says this like, oh, yeah, lefties are always talking about CIA involvement in Latin America. Like, oh, okay. To which my answer is, here again, we can go over this one together. Watch this. American regime change Wikipedia. And we can go over an incomplete list. Oh, that's a big old Wikipedia article. Oh, yeah. So in law, precedent is often used to establish intent. So, for example, if I was convicted, uh, or I'm sorry, not convicted, if I was arrested for, um, let's say, going out onto the street and jerking my dick, my, my big fucking veiny white dick, in front of a group of uh, uh, school children, and they kind of arrest me on circumstantial evidence, like, oh yeah, we saw like a big bearded guy out there by the street, you live kind of in the area, we thought you were the best case, I think that'd be a pretty easy case to dismiss. However, if I have gone to the same street corner and jerked my big veiny white dick 17 times over the past six years, and someone matching my description does an 18th time, the fact that I have a precedent of involvement there is relevant to the case. We all know this. This is obvious. You'd have to be an idiot not to believe this. An indication that a person or a group has done things in the past is often used as a very legitimate indication that they may have done so in unclear circumstances in the present. Easy. Does that mean the CIA was involved? No. Does that mean the CIA could have been involved and there's a very real possibility and this is exactly the sort of thing the CIA has been doing for literal decades and there's no way we could meaningfully know because they're the greatest and probably most well-funded intelligence agency in the entire planet and we really have no way of meaningfully understanding what they're doing so the best thing we can do to call them out on their shit is extrapolate based on um, like small piece of information given coincidences and conveniences that seem to align with their values? Yes. That's all we can do sometimes. All we can really do is shrug our shoulders and say, well, I mean, it's the CIA. And I don't think that's unreasonable. I don't think that's fallacious. I don't think that's uh, uh, irrational in the slightest. I think that is a very reasonable reaction to precedent. Very, very much so. And I will say this, this is my, this is my, um, this is my top secret personal belief. I don't actually think that it matters whether or not the CIA was involved. I think we should blame the CIA anyway, because just, you know, using inference, the consequence, well, there are four possibilities here, right? Either the CIA was involved and we blame the CIA, in which case... Incredible. Wow. How do, how do we do it? Incredible. Amazing. The CIA wasn't involved, and we don't blame them. Incredible. Such restraint. How do we do it? How do we know that they didn't do it? Incredible. Amazing. The CIA did do it, and we don't blame them. An issue. A problem. A serious problem, in fact. Because, uh, you know, they did it and we can't keep letting them get away with it, re, or they didn't do it and we blame them. In which case, who the fuck cares? Who, who the fuck cares about what? Are we hurting the CIA's feelings? The CIA has been responsible for an enormous fucking wave of regime change over the past century. Like, the CIA is an organization which is dedicated to facilitating, among other things, regime change. That's what they do. It literally is what they do. It's part of their fucking job. It's what they do. 
So I don't actually personally care whether or not they did this. They're the ones who would have done it if they hadn't done it. And one way or another, blaming them for this facilitates the broader goal of condemning the CIA for their long-standing history of facilitating regime change against democratically elected left-leaning presidential candidates. You just... They're an intelligence agency, you know? There are limits to what we can meaningfully infer from the data available. And in 40 years, when they declassify all of this, it's going to be too late anyway. Bolivia will be on fire. Well, or underwater, depending on how close they are to the coast. So, that's it. You may disagree with some of the assertions I made here. Um, I, I don't know why, because I'm right about everything. But... Um, all of these stand in contrast to the framing and contextualization that Destiny has sort of set this event within. Destiny has made some phenomenally stupid claims concerning the Bolivian coup that actively disgust me because he has in the past made an effort, a concerted effort, to act responsibly when it comes to breaking news, to avoid engaging in, uh, in, in, in hystericism, to avoid... Um, uh, um, editorializing information to the extent that he's contributing to the public harm. And this time, he has done all of those things. Very sad, very disappointing. He can either shut up about this and recognize the fact that his history and his foreign policy are both dog shit, at least in this case, or he is free to debate me. Because even if half of the things that I have said here somehow are factually incorrect or insubstantiated, that does not change the fact that Destiny's claims are blown the fuck out by the other half. It's that simple. Cringe. Cringe. All right, there, got that off my fucking chest. That's it, that's all there is to say.